Janet, here's that report you needed. Oh, thanks, Paul. You're a lifesaver. I'm sorry it took so long. Oh, are you kidding? It would have taken most people three days. You got it here in five minutes. Well, I know you needed it. You're the best. <laughs> Janet, can I talk to you for a minute? I, you know, never mind. You're busy. I'll, never mind. No, no, no. Paul, go ahead. Well, it's just that my therapist told me I should tell you something. And it's a little personal. What is it? Janet, I have a crush on you. Yes, it's a very intense, multi-layered kind of crush. Oh, I, I... My therapist says there are about uh, seven levels. Well, I don't, I don't know what to say. You, you don't have to say anything. Uh, my, my therapist says that I, am telling you, shouldn't expect any response from you, but more it should be about me revealing a truth that I've been concealing and holding dear, like treasure. And now that I've done that, I suppose I could go back to work. Okay, Paul. <laughs> and I don't have any illusions about you and I. I mean, my therapist told me not to. I, I know that you're a very happily married woman. Yes. Yes, I'm a very lucky wife. <laughs> no, your husband's the lucky one. Because he has a wife that's not only beautiful, but she's intelligent and with a kind heart. Oh, you have to stop with the compliments. Otherwise, I'll never get my head through that door. Yes, you will. <laughs> because you're far too fine a person to let something as fleeting as a compliment sway you from living your life according to principle and honor. I'm sorry, was that too personal? I... No, no, Paul, that, that was very sweet. And you can tell your therapist that you made my day. <laughs> Now, I need to get together a phone list. I've been having a series of erotic dreams about you. They're really very beautiful. You're, you're riding on a horse on a beach, naked. And your hair is flowing behind you like the tail of a kite. And your little horse's hooves are making little heart-shaped prints in the sand in a rhythm that says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I wake up covered in my own semen. I'm sorry, was that too personal? Uh, let's, let's, let's just pretend you didn't say that. I wouldn't want this to affect our relationship at work. We don't know each other that well. No, we don't. Then again, how could we? I mean, you've never really given me the chance, have you, Janet? Excuse me? Huh, it's like you really only talk to me when you need something. You know, it's, it's kind of cruel when you think about it. I mean, it's really more kind of like I'm your slave. Paul, that's because you work for me. Oh, that's right, Miss. Well, let me go get some food. Okay, you know what, Paul? I think you should leave. Your behavior is starting to scare me. Oh, you know what's scaring you, lady? Intimacy. And you wouldn't know it if it stood outside your bedroom window at night and watched you while you slept in those baby doll pajamas with your husband. Get out, Paul! Well, all right, I'll get out. I'll get out because evidently I'm a problem and I solve your problems. That's what I do. So if I'm your problem, I'll just I'll go ahead and get out. I guess I've become a real big problem for you, haven't I, Janet? Maybe I could solve your problem for you permanently. If I could just drop dead, would that be good for you, Janet? If I just drop dead right here in your office, would that be all right with you? I guess it wouldn't because then you'd have another problem. A dead, stinky, rotting body in your office. That'd be another problem, wouldn't it? Well, I guess I can't do anything right, can I, Janet? I guess I can't even die right. I guess I'm just a moron, and I guess there's no pleasing you, is there? There is no pleasing you, lady, and you know why that is? Do you know? Because you are a psycho! <laughs> Ooh. 
like to have some lunch, though? Forget it!